ไปโอเค so why are you sure that way let me just check one other thing here oh that's what it's doing that Oh, Santiago got a haircut. Looking good, bro. Yeah. All right, I'm just changing the layout here so I can see more of you guys. It's going a little slow. Come on. There we go. Boom. Boom. All right, cool. So we're doing 6.2 solving systems with substitution. Um, first thing we're going to do here is you see right here it says y equals 3x. Okay, so instead of this y, we're going to write 3x. So let me show you what happens. Take that 3x, plug it in for that y, so you get x plus 3x equals negative 32. So the only thing we changed in the bottom equation right here is that y, and we changed it to 3x. Okay, that's all we did. So what is x plus 3x? x plus 3x is 4x. Oh, by the way, you guys, if your eyes get tired of looking at your bright computer screen all the time, you can go to your settings, type in night light, and you can make it warmer or cooler. And I recommend warmer because then it won't jack up your eyes over time. So what we're going to do here, and I'm so happy because I can use all my colors like I always use, which is hard to see when I have it all warm. All right. You're good. So we get x equals negative 32, or no, that's not what we get. We get x equals negative 8. Let me just fix that setting real quick so it's not quite that bad. Need a little brighter so you can see the colors better. There we go. All right. So we get negative eight. When you get negative eight, you got to get. So we have x. Now we got to get y. So we're going to take this negative eight and plug it in for the x right here. Right. So instead of that x, we're going to say negative 8. So negative 8 plus y equals negative 32. And then all you got to do is add 8 to both sides. And we get y equals negative 24. Okay, always a good idea to write your final answer as an ordered pair. Remember that it always goes x, y order. Okay, so there you go. Any questions on that one? Okay. So write this one down. So are you guys excited or nervous about coming back in person? Type it in the chat. Excited or nervous or something else. 
Both, Clevis, excited, excellent, both. Nervous, both. Much excitement, I like it. Both, can't wait. It is nice. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera around so you guys can see what the classroom looks like. So you gotta look at my other screen. I got two things going here. So look for my little picture right here. And then you can see what the classroom looks like. So we currently have it set up for SAT. SAT, we should have 10 kids. It's actually PSAT, but we should have 10 kids in the classroom. So you can see, so I've got this giant area kind of in the front here set up. I've got tons and tons of whiteboards. And you can see like how spread out those desks are. So easily six feet in between the desks. Got a killer mountain view back there with those three windows. Another whiteboard over here. That window goes to the hallway. Um, and there's a door. Okay, so if you're nervous, I'm honestly a little nervous too to have you back because I sure as heck don't want to get COVID, right? That's what we're all nervous about, understandably so. Um, but if everyone wears their masks and is diligent about doing so, like you might take it off, have a quick sip of water, and then put it right back on kind of thing, we should be safe, all right? Because the masks work. That's what everybody has been talking about over this whole kind of nightmare pandemic that we've been facing. But, uh, you know, and then when I, we did SAT for the seniors who didn't get to take it as juniors, so we did it for them as seniors uh, two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago tomorrow. Um, it made me feel a whole lot more comfortable because everything was so spread out and you know you're not up walking around or anything so i felt pretty safe in doing that and i have asthma so i'm you know definitely concerned about do not want to get this thing but uh made me feel a whole lot better about things okay so when you have equations like this i'm just going to rewrite them here So that's kind of the easiest kind of problem because all you got to do is take this 3x instead of this y, write the 3x. So it looks like this. 3x equals negative x plus 4. So we took that 3x. That's not what I meant to hit. We took that 3x, right? Instead of this y, we just wrote the 3x right there. Okay? So the y is gone, in its place is the 3x. So what would I do first, Dominic? Oh, Dominic, can I mute? Hello. Oh, all right. You're good. Uh, the question was, what do I do first? The next step? Yeah. Okay. Just uh, add x, right? Yeah. I always want to get rid of that smallest variable first, so I'm going to add x to both sides. So 3x's plus 1x is 4x. So we get 4x equals 4. And then all you got to do is divide by 4 on both sides, and you get x equals 1. Don't forget, you got to solve for y, right? So if I take this equation right up here, y equals 3x. Somebody saw us there, Mike, Mike, probably Dominic. Um, so y equals 3x, then I'm going to take this 1 and plug it in for this x right here. So what's y going to equal? Somebody? Dominic, you still got your mic. Um, what's y equal? Anyone? Three. Good. So we get y equals three times one. So
So 3 times 1 is 3. y equals 3. Written as an order of pair, it's 1, comma, 3. Okay. It's nice with the colors. I like it. Anyone need more time on that one? All right. So I want you to try to solve this one on your own. You're going to answer in that Jamboard. So if you haven't joined the Jamboard, answer in the Jamboard. Maddie, did you ever get that video? I finally got it loaded yeah. up yesterday. Yeah, and I am doing this side of it. I saw it. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. All right, good okay. deal. Yeah, I've been having weird technical difficulties with the Wii video thing, so I'll work through it all. It's annoying, but we'll get through it. All right, you're answered in that jam board. Jamboard's in the chat. You still haven't given us. Oh, I haven't given. Thank you. Giving you editing privileges as soon as it loads. Oh, we're going super fast. Or maybe we won't. We'll see. My thing's grayed out, so. Oh, well, just answer in the chat. I'll see if I can get this thing going again. I'm going to just try to do it again. It's going to look painfully slow. Yeah. We'll just do it in the chat. It's going to take too long. Back to the screen, there we go. Are you using that to whip your dog, Ari? It's not nice. Trying to entertain her since she uh, keeps walking on my computer. You gotta show everybody your puppy, Ari, because you get a collective oh. aww. Oh, Nine week old little furball. Say hi. Ow, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no. Gotta love those little needle teeth. Good stuff. <laughs> Negative 8 and point 0.3, point 0.4375, negative 8, negative 16, negative 8, negative 9. One of those three answers is right. I'll give you that much. Uh, 
Okay, more answers. We only have three. Come on, put it in the chat. What's your answer? You can write it as an order pair. It's just easier. So I encourage you guys to use those videos if you get confused on stuff. Four answers out of like 26, I think. Seems like we're getting some common ground as well. Okay, let's do this thing. So we're going to take That x minus 1, and replace it for the y right there. So it looks like this. x minus 1 equals 2x plus 7. And I always like to get rid of the smallest variable first. So we're going to subtract x from both sides. And we get negative 1 equals x plus 7. And then we are subtracting 7 from both sides. So you get negative 8 equals x. What I would do is take that negative 8 and plug it in right here for that x. So we get y equals negative 8 minus 1. Remember that when we're subtracting two negatives, you just add the numbers and keep the negative. So y equals negative 9. Written as an order pair, you get negative 8, negative 9. So give yourself a pat on the back if you got it correct. I meant it literally. Come on. All right. Next one. Write that one down. I'm going to write it as well. Isn't it so much better having the shared screen? I finally got my 25 foot HDMI cable so I can plug into the wall. Now you don't have to see the big shining orb in the middle. You can see right there. If you look at me on the little screen. Okay, so what I do here is y equals 3x minus 4. So instead of this y, I write 3x minus 4. So the weird part about it is that you then have to multiply by this 5 right here. And I'll show you how that works. So we get negative 2x plus 5 times the quantity 3x minus 4 equals 19. Give you a chance to write that down. So we had a bunch of people that had negative 8, negative 9. And if you didn't have negative 8, negative 9, then you can see what mistake you made as we go through the problem here. So we are going to distribute into the parentheses. So we have negative 2x plus 15x minus 20 equals 19. What Several students do is you'll forget to distribute to the negative 4 as well. So 5 times negative 4, negative 20 down here. And now we can combine like terms. 
So we can combine the negative 2x and the 15x. When we do that, we get 13x. I always say it's much easier to think about, instead of negative 2x plus 15x, think of it like 15 minus 2. That's way easier to think about. So 13x minus 20 equals 19. Santiago, what do I do next? You, uh, you divide by 13. Cover up the variable. What do you do? Ready to cover up the 13x instead of dividing by 13? What, can, what else can you do? Um. Right? If I cover up this variable, what's the only thing I can do with this right here? How do I get rid of negative add 20? Add it. Right? Add 20? Yes. So we're going to add 20 to both sides. And we get 13x equals 39. What do I do next, Shannon? You divide 39 by 13. Yep, divide 13 both sides. And we get x equals 3. So when we have that x equals 3, I'm going to take this equation right here, the 3x minus 4 equals y, and I'm going to plug in that 3. So we get y equals 3x minus 4. We know from below on the left that y equals 3. So I'm going to just plug that 3 in right here for the x. So y equals 3 times 3 minus 4. So y equals 9 minus 4. Y equals 5. Written as an order pair, we get 3 comma 5. So your double check on this, remember x, y order always. So in grading some of your late quizzes and stuff, I saw people trying to do direct variation stuff and slope stuff from even this chapter. Remember, y is always on top, y to the sky, y is always on top. People are flipping slopes and flipping direct variation and all sorts of stuff. Always look at the comments when you click on grades in Schoology. Look at the comments because if you did something wrong on a quiz, many times, not always, but many times I'll write a comment which will tell you how to do the problem in the future because you may see these problems again. Okay, so if I want to plug this in, we have that one equation, y equals 3x minus 4. So if I plug this 3 in right here and this 5 in here, it looks like this, 5 equals 3 times 3 minus 4. So you get 5 equals 9 minus 4. So 5 equals 5. That's how you can check it. Okay? Just plug those order pairs into. And there, I chose this equation because it's already... Solve for y, it just makes it easier to solve. Any questions on that one? Okay, give me fist to five. Almost everybody on here I can see has their camera on, on your level of understanding. Five, I totally get it. Fist, you're speaking Martian again. So five, I totally get it. Fist, I have no idea what's going on. All right, looking around. Okay, now that's pretty good. I'll take it. Only got a two, three, okay. Next one, yeah, write this one down. So y equals two x plus one. 
Second equation, 4x minus 2y equals 6. So the nice part about using this fancy little microphone thing right here is that when you guys are in person, you can hear people at home through the speakers in the classroom. We got all these speakers in the classroom, four different speakers in the classroom. Also play music in the classroom during work time as well. Totally fine by me. Uh, many times we'll have to, I will play some inappropriate music as you might imagine. Um, so we have a system we'll talk about for dealing with that. Okay, so we got y equals 2x plus 1 right here. We're going to take that, 2x plus 1, and plug it in for this y. All right, so we get 4x minus 2 times the 2x plus 1. And then that equals 6. So we took this 2x plus 1 right here. Instead of this y, we plugged it in right here. So finish the problem and answer in the chat. And I'll chill and wait till you are done. The best thing with this microphone is I can go way down the hall and I can just randomly yell at people. It's kind of fun. Now, you might have a horrifying moment in your classroom. You can laugh at your teachers because some people will take the microphone into the restroom. That's not good. <laughs> then you hear some noises you never wanted to hear out of a teacher or a student for that matter. See, Charlotte's disturbed. Look at her. <laughs> She's like, no, please, no. <clears throat> Hopefully you don't hear that. You won't out of me. I'd take it off if I need to use the restroom. I'm paranoid. Answer in the chat. Don't forget to distribute that negative 2 to both the 2x and the 1, because that's where people mess up generally. They'll distribute to one out of the two things in the parentheses, not both. Make sure you solve for x and y as well. OK, I found this on the web for solve for accident with you. Check it out. That was my iPad. Out of nowhere, Siri comes on. I'm not even near my iPad. That's pretty funny. I got two computers, a monitor, iPad, phone, Apple Watch. We got it all going on. Is this not solvable? I don't know. You'll have to see. If it's not solvable, like all the variables cancel, if you get 2 equals 2, that would be infinite solution. If you get two numbers that do not equal one another, the problem has no solve. So throw it in there. If you think x and y equal something, or you think it's infinite or no solution, write it in. Yeah, see, that's what was tripping everybody up. Yes, for those of you that wrote no soul, that is correct. I will show you now how it works. So we plug that negative 2 into the parentheses distribute. So we get 4x minus 4x minus 2 equals 6. 4x minus 4x goes away. Negative 2 does not equal negative 6. So, written in red for emphasis, the problem has no solve. Problem's going straight to hell. Okay? All right. We get it? Next one. 
We're not doing that one. This is your last problem. So write that down. As you write it down, I want you to think. So none of the variables are by themselves. To solve with substitution, we have to get a variable by itself. I want you to think top equation or bottom equation, which one's the easiest one to solve and for which variable. So top equation, bottom equation, which one's easier to solve and for what variable. So let's give people a chance to think about that. Put your hand up if you know. And if you need to go to the gym, you can hold your hand up with your other hand or rest it on the table. What do you think, Ari? Ari, just remember to unmute. Or not. Ari? How about Anna? Which variable should I solve for? Top or bottom, X or Y? The second one. Second one and X or Y? Uh, y. Why'd you choose that? Because there's less messy. Right, less messy. There's nothing. It's positive and there's no number in front. So this one is definitely the easiest one to solve for. Let's say we went up here and solved for this 4x. That's a pain in the neck because I would have to subtract the 3y over here and then divide by 4. And if I divide 14 by 4, I get a fraction. That's just no fun. Okay, so we're going to take the bottom equation, negative 2x plus y equals negative 3. And we're going to solve for this y right here by adding 2x to both sides. So we get y equals, notice that I write the 2x first, because I know we've been doing a lot of slope-intercept stuff and the x term always comes first. Just a good idea to get in that habit, because if I make you graph these things, like I could give you one of these problems, to solve by graphing, to solve by substitution, and to solve by elimination. Okay, we can solve that single problem in three different ways. And once you have me for Algebra 2, you can solve it in like another three different ways. Okay? So now it's easier. So we get 2x minus 3. Now make sure we solve the bottom equation here. So make sure that you plug it into the top equation. Okay, really important that you do that. And that's what y equals. So instead of this y right here, we're going to write the 2x minus 3. So it looks like this. We get 3 times 2x minus 3 plus 4x equals 14. So just to emphasize, we took this 2x two, two plus 3, we replaced it for this y right here, like that. Okay, so instead of this y up top, we wrote 2x minus 3, because when we solved, we got y equals 2x minus 3. Then all you got to do is distribute. So we're going to multiply 3 times 2x and 3 times negative 3, getting 6x minus 9 plus 4x equals 14. Okay, any questions about that? Because that's the most confusing problem we've done. You're going to have um, a worksheet on this tomorrow for the asynchronous day. Remember, we have PSAT tomorrow, so we will not have a Google Meet. I'll be administering PSAT, so no Google Meet tomorrow. Um, but I already have the lesson posted, and I'll, I'll publish it after class today, so you could do both of them if you want. Okay, now we need to combine like terms. We have 6x and we have 4x, so that equals 10x. 
So we have 10x minus 9 equals 14. So I want you to think in your head, is your answer going to be a whole number or it will be a decimal or fraction? Whole number or decimal and fraction. So try to solve that in your head. That's what I'm getting to. I want you guys to get in the habit of thinking ahead in the problems because it helps you to figure it out. So if I add 9 to both sides, then what I get is 10x equals 23. And if I divide by 10, I'm going to get that improper fraction, 23 over 10 which I am going to make into a decimal because it is a terminating decimal, 2.3. So I think it's easier to plug in 2.3 as opposed to 23 over 10. So we're going to take that 2.3 and plug it into the other. Well, actually, it doesn't matter which equation you plug into. I'm actually going to plug the 2.3 right here. Okay, for this x, we're going to write 2.3. So I'm going to copy this to the same page. So you can see that. So we're going to take this 2.3. and plug it in right here for that x. So we get y equals 2 times 2.3 minus 3. So y equals 4.6 minus 3. So y equals Oh boy. Sorry if I'm making you nauseous. Y equals 1.6. Written as an order pair, 2.3 comma 1.6. Okay. Any questions on that? Sure, if we did that right here, you'd have 23 over 10, so you'd have to multiply 2 times 23 over 10. Just makes it a little bit more challenging. You'd have to switch to negative 3 to 30 over 10, add those two fractions together. So the reason I want to see that, you basically need to be ready for either, right? Because you'll take, take the SAT 9 towards the end of this semester or end of next semester, I guess. We'll see how the testing goes. I have no idea. The district is changing its mind by the day, so we'll see. But basically, you could see either the fraction or the decimal answer. But let's say you got the decimal answer. If you get one of these nice little graphing calculators, I've already showed you this trick, but I'm going to show you it again to try to encourage you to buy a graphing calculator. Like I said, between 100 and 140, which is just ridiculous. They charge that much, but um, so if you add 23 divided by 10, you can click math, enter, enter on the graphing calculator. It'll go to a fraction, and if you go math, enter, enter again. Oh, I got to do it different. Uh, let's say we have 2.3, you can go math, enter, enter. Then it'll change it back into a fraction. So it goes decimal to fraction. It'll also reduce fractions, which is super handy as well. So if you have 6 tenths, that reduces to 3 over 5. Kind of handy. All right. Your homework 
it is posted already. I will display it up there for you. And you can start cranking on it. Ask me as many questions as you need to. I'll create the breakout rooms in case we got other questions you need to ask me privately. Um, but yeah, get started as soon as you're done with the homework and have it turned in, then uh, you can peace out. All right. Let me stop this video.